Hi and welcome to High on Coding. I'm your host, Mamat Azam, and today we are going to talk about MongoDB. It's a document database. You're all familiar with relational databases like SQL Server, Oracle, and many other types. Um, so the, the MongoDB and also the CouchDB, these are document databases. So you can store documents inside these databases. These are very, very fast performing databases since they don't use joins, but they use pointers. They are schema free and they're open source. Um, you can actually see that there are a bunch of drivers. If you go to driver section, driver actually means that you can use it with C Sharp, you can use it with Perl, you can use it with Ruby, Python, and every day more and more drivers are being created. So you can see over here the C Sharp driver, which we are going to uh, see in, in the future screencast. So if you are a fan of document databases, if you want to just look around, if you just want to uh, experience a different thing, download MongoDB. So I'm just going to go to Downloads and whatever system that you have, just download it uh, you know, for that particular system. Uh, MongoDB uh, kind of states that you should use the 64-bit system since then you will be able to use more of the memory, more of the available space. Um, I'm using 32-bit Windows, so I downloaded this particular build, which is 1.2.3. Next step is you can download drivers. In the future videos, I'll be showing how you can use MongoDB with C Sharp. So I downloaded the C Sharp driver, it's hosted on GitHub. Once you have downloaded the drivers, when you have unzipped the drivers and unzipped MongoDB, the next step is to start the MongoDB server. I'm going to go to my CMD or the command line and I'm just going to start the server by saying mongod. Okay? And when I do this, you're going to see that it has started the mongodb server and now I can execute my commands. So let's go ahead and it's, and in this particular video I'm not going to show you how you can use it with C# -sharp. so I'm just going to use believe it or not JavaScript. So here we go. We are on the JavaScript console, okay? And let me actually do this. Ah, here we go. Okay, so we are on the JavaScript console and if you don't believe me, you can, you can actually see that you can do things like this, two plus two and all this stuff. You can even make a function. I can make a function uh, which is add and then it can return x plus y. And now I can invoke the function, which is add four plus five. Oops, uh, add four comma five. And you will see that it works just like if you're working with JavaScript, okay? So what's the next thing? The next thing is you can create your DB, you can create your database, and it's very easy to create a database. So let me show you. I'm just going to say var mongo equal to new mongo. Okay, and now if I type mongo, you are going to see that since it's JavaScript, it's going to uh, show me all the functions that I can actually execute. And the, the function that I really need is get db. So I'm going to go db equal to mongo dot get db and I'm going to pass in the, the name it's a good old not win database right the beauty of this is that if the not win database does not exist then it's going to create one well but it does actually exist in my system so I will get the db so if I do a db you'll see that I have not win the other things that are important are collections. To consider collection like tables. So I can say show collections. And you can actually see that I have two collections. One is a system collection and one is categories. Categories is my own table. So let's go ahead and get categories. So I can say db.categories. And you will see that's going to type like northwind.categories. So this is northwind.categories. If I want to just display everything inside the categories table, 
out of the categories collection. It's going to say db dot categories dot find. And these are like kind of like top ten or the or the first ten uh, rows in the categories table. I don't even think that the categories table contains more than ten rows. It's a small database that I have, and you can actually see that it is represented. It is just injected, just like objects, because everything that is inside uh, the categories table, I stored it as an object. It's a serialized object at the JSON. Okay. Now, if I want to find something, so if I say var category, actually, let me put a break over here. Here we go. Var category equal to db dot categories dot find one, and I want to find a category where the category name is liquor, and I I don't know if the spelling is correct or wrong, but anyway, just going to say name will be liquor l-i-q-i-o-r okay and then i'm just going to print out category and you can actually see we have fetched a category where the category name was liquor so we got the category over here how about if i go and change one of these categories okay so i can say category dot products I'm going to change one of the products and I'm going to say, okay, zero dot price equal to $45. I'm changing the price of T, which exists on the zero index, to $45. Okay? But I need to persist it, right? So I'm just going to say db dot categories dot save and then save the, save the category. Now let's do it again. Just going to fetch the category again okay from the database and now print it again and you will see that now it has been updated to 45 now uh, I'm using the save function so save will save or in or it will update so right now since category already exists so it's going to up uh, it's going to update it I can easily save a new category so if I just want to say new category equal to new object and then I can say new category dot name equal to and I can say okay whatever I want to type over here I'm just going to say uh, blah and then db dot categories dot save I'm going to save new category Okay, and now let's actually fetch the category out. I am just going to use one of the previous commands and I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to fetch the category with the title or the name blah and I'm going to pull it out and here we go. So we have a category with name blah. One thing that you will realize is that I have a category over here with name blah, but I have some categories with name and products. Well, this is a scheme of free database so you're not bound for schemas right yes you can have uh, multiple categories inside your category collection each having a different schema i think this is awesome you don't have to worry about different things right and that's uh that's pretty much it for the uh document database the introduction and this is a very wide topic so uh, I hope you listen to the next screencast because I'm going to dive deeper into uh, MongoDB and I'm going to show you how you can use it using C-Sharp. If you are interested in learning more, just go to High on Coding. I have three articles over there. We have Introduction to MongoDB, uh, Hierarchical Data using MongoDB, and then the Converter, which is very interesting. So check out those articles uh, and learn about MongoDB. I'm Sure, it will help you in the future in your greenfield projects. And uh, this is one of the things to keep an eye on uh, because, you know, hopefully in the future, we will all use uh, document databases for our greenfield applications. Thank you very much and stay tuned on High Encoding.